Hello, my name is John Mathewson. I'm the curator here at the Dorset Historical Society and Bly House Museum. This is a quick tour of our exhibits currently on display on the second floor of the museum. We're going to start with the piping water exhibit. Streams and pond water contain harmful bacteria and industrial waste, so clean spring water was greatly valued. Water was collected in pails and brought back to the home, usually by women or children wearing yokes. Later, farmers would run pipes to their houses using wood, soapstone, or cement. The wood pipes were hollowed out using long augers. There are even some rumors that some farmers used pipes made from marble, but we do not know of any specifically. In 1912 and 1913, the village of Dorset piped water from a reservoir, creating a municipal water system for the first time as can be seen in these insurance maps from 1914. Later, East Dorset would install one as well. Also during this period, drilled wells became an affordable option for people living outside of the villages. Vermont was an independent republic from 1777 to 1791, and from 1785 to 1788 produced its own copper coins at Reuben Harmon's Mint in East Rupert, just north of the Dorset line. The building was moved and is now a barn at a farm in Pollock. The United States government did not issue paper currency until the Civil War. Before that, paper currency was issued by local banks, and we have some on display here. These are bills from the Bank of Windsor, West River Bank in Jamaica, the Bank of Middlebury, the Danby Bank, and the Bank of the Black River in Ludlow. The Batten Kill National Bank of Manchester also issued currency. Lorenzo Hatch was born and raised in Dorset and at 18 became an apprentice at the U.S. Bureau of Engraving in Washington. In 1908 he was hired by the Chinese government to create engravings for their new paper currency. He died in China in 1914. This is a crayon drawing of Harriet Harrington drawn around 1885. This is an exhibit of the paintings of John Lilly. In the last decades of the 19th century, Dorset became a haven for artists, some well-known, some students, mostly associated with the Art Students League of New York City. These artists included Edwin Child and Walter Sherlaw. Unknown to the artist, a young boy once came upon Sherlaw painting in a field. The boy watched in amazement as Sherlaw applied colors to his canvas and created a thing of beauty. That boy was John Lilly, who would later write, I did not see the new creation, nor did I see an oil painting for many years. Yet from that day, I began to paint, not with brush and canvas, but with my own mind. His family also earned extra income boarding summer visitors. One day he came home from work and found that a group of artists had arrived, including Walter Sherlaw, the painter he had spied on 20 years before. What happened next became the core of local legend. Lily later explained it, quote, The old craving to paint returned. I did wish to demonstrate, yet I did not have the time. It happened one day that I spread some of my house paints with an old shaving brush, which was my first attempt of using colors for a picture, and the result, some said, made them sit up and take notice. From that time, around 1904, through the rest of his life, John Lilly painted, and enjoyed one-man exhibitions in Boston and New York. Walter Hard wrote a poem about him. He gained some national fame as a fine artist with no formal training, and his art sold briskly. His paintings remain in the collections of the Dorset Historical Society, the T.W. Wood Gallery in Montpelier, Vermont, the Bennington Museum, the Carnegie Institute, the Corcoran Gallery of Washington, D.C., and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Lilly wrote, quote, from the first, I have painted these things in my own way, never taking a lesson in drawing or color mixing, not caring what the other fellow did or how he did it, just giving facts in my own simple language as they were revealed to me, not caring what people said as they were my stories and I must stick to facts at any cost. This is an exhibition of the photographs of Huntington Pratt Gilbert, who lived from 1876 to 1962. Hunt Gilbert lived his entire life in Dorset and started a poultry business with his sister Anna in 1904. 
Also around that time, he learned how to use a camera and took many photographs of his family, friends, and travels, both far and near. He sold many of his images as postcards. The museum owns eight notebooks of Gilbert's negatives, dating from 1904 to 1915. These images document the everyday life of Dorset, playing golf, quarrying marble, returning from a camping trip, boating on Lake St. Catherine, readying for a wedding, cutting hay, tending sheep. This is the second exhibition of Gilbert's photos as the Dorset Historical Society slowly digitizes and prints the hundreds of negatives in this exciting collection. After 1925, Hunt Gilbert began concentrating more on his poultry business. In later years, he spent his time drawing and painting. The framed images in this exhibit are digital prints made from Hunt Gilbert's negatives by George Beret. This is the Dorset Historical Society's library. Many people come to research the history of Dorset and their own family histories. Especially during the summer, this room can be very busy. Along the walls of this room, we have a selection of paintings by local artists or of artists from away of local scenes. We'll start with Beatrice Jackson, Study for More Construction, which she painted in 1956. B. Jackson and her husband, David Humphreys, painted in Paris until 1940 when they moved to Dorset. Arthur Jones painted the Dwight Bernard House in Deerfield, Massachusetts sometime around 1965. Jones was born in Dorset and he first exhibited his work at the age of 20 in 1948. He remains an active member of the local art community. George McBride lived from 1889 to 1962 and was a master builder here in Dorset. We don't know much about his artwork, although his name does appear in many Southern Vermont Art Center catalogs, and we do have this poster he did for a raffle at White's Garage to support the American Legion in 1938. Carl Ramsey, who lived from 1882 to 1968, was an engineer, naturalist, poet, and artist. He lectured and published on orchids and made a series of artist studies of the orchids at his Dorset home, Swamp Acres. He painted this winter scene in 1942. David Humphreys, who lived from 1901 to 1970, was the husband of B. Jackson. He studied in Woodstock, New York, and then painted in Paris until 1940, when he and his wife, Beatrice, moved to Dorset. He painted the Green Peak from West Road in 1940. Peter Salmon was born in Vermont, and he counts Middlebury, Harvard, and Boston University, along with the Brooklyn Museum, among his educational credentials. A longtime summer resident of Dorset, he has painted many scenes, including this large portrait of Prentice Pond off of Church Street in Dorset. Famed historian Henrik van Loon moved to Dorset in the late 1920s. He was also an artist and he painted this scene of a table at his friend Claude Dern's restaurant Lafayette in 1931. This is a Bly House Museum named after Elsa Bly who bequeathed this house to the Dorset Historical Society in 1991. This is a portrait of an old man she did in 1931. Cordelia de Schweinitz was very active in the Dorset Arts community for several decades. She painted the scene of the Fowler Gardens in Dorset Hollow sometime around 1930. Edwin Child was a nationally renowned illustrator and artist who lived in Dorset. He painted the scene of Church Street sometime around 1925. Emily Zell was born in Havana studied in Mexico, and enjoyed a career as a sculptor in Philadelphia. What exactly her connection with Dorset is remains a mystery. Jean Pelham, who lived from 1909 to 2004, was an illustrator for the Saturday Evening Post, who lived in Arlington in the community of other Saturday Evening Post illustrators. He painted this scene of the Upper Quarry in Dorset sometime in the 1960s. The upper quarry is above the Norcross West Quarry or the Swimming Hole Quarry here in Dorset. Claude Dern, who lived from 1906 to 1995, was a rather colorful character in Dorset during the 20th century. 
He moved from southern France to Dorset in 1928, when he began to run the restaurant Lafayette from 1931 to 1937. In the 1950s, he became known as the Strawberry King of Dorset, all the time painting scenes and portraits of Dorset life. Wallace Feinstock, who lived from 1877 to 1962, was an artist with the Art Students League of New York when he first came to Dorset. He met and fell in love in 1914 with local author and historian Zephine Humphrey. He remained an active member of the community for the remainder of his life. Zephine Humphrey, by the way, wrote The Story of Dorset, a seminal history of Dorset in 1924. Dean Fawcett, who lived from 1913 to 1998, was born in Utah and enjoyed an international reputation as a fine artist. His painting Derby View hung in Dwight Eisenhower's White House study. He also served as president of the Southern Vermont Art Center. Russell Park, who lived from 1906 to 1975, was originally from Wells, Vermont, and he ran a small Dorset Notion store with his wife. An invalid for a long time, he began painting with materials left in his care for the winter by Dorset artist Harriet de Sanchez. Thank you for taking this virtual tour of the upstairs of the Blyhaus Museum at the Dorset Historical Society. We hope it's been educational and we hope you enjoy the downstairs exhibits as well. Thank you very much.